Jeez. Someone is gonna need to keep an eye on Rex. No, I'm just, I love you guys. <laughs> All right, thumbnail. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. We're gonna go through the the hot, most highly voted, mm -hmm. the top 10 most classic quintessential Irish whiskeys. What do we mean and not mean by that? What we mean is something that is representative of Irish whiskey as a category, not necessarily your favorite, not necessarily the most expensive, not the rarest, just most representative of the classic flavors you find in Irish whiskey. The epitome of Irish whiskeys. I'm gonna epitome all over this. So Daniel, we, we had the magnificent bastards in the whiskey tribe vote up yes. across the entire category of the Irish whiskeys. What are the criteria for an Irish whiskey to be considered an Irish whiskey? What are they? Made in Ireland. That's it? Yeah. Three years old. Okay. Aged in oak. Are you sure about that? I think that's just aged in wood. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different country. Yes. We're gonna go through and we're gonna give uh, first impressions on all these bottles here. Unfortunately, Daniel got wind of this and dashed my dreams against the floor. What happened, Daniel? I broke John pa John's lane 12 year old powers. Just knocked it off the table. Yeah, just specifically because I knew he liked it. I was like, boom, <laughs> get out of here. All right, let's start off with number 10. This is the okay. patties. The patties. What is, do we so, know what's going on with the patties? I'm gonna tell, ironically, this is kinda cool. Sure. There's a story I'm gonna tell about our number one. Jay. That story include, includes our number 10. It's sort of a bookend. Okay. They're all part of the same story of Irish whiskey. Okay. This is one you, of the- Are you gonna do the spoilers for the number one? Uh, no. Okay, so this is one of the families. Jameson. Yeah. It's Jameson. There you go. Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Patties was one of the only three remaining functioning Irish whiskey distilleries by the 1960s. Mm -hmm. It was Paddy's. It was, well, Bushmills technically was one of them, so that makes four up in right. Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jameson and Basically, Powers. Basically, the entirety of Irish industry got boiled down to just a handful of players. Yeah, three the or four players. Scene. The bottom fell out of the market for a litany of reasons. And Paddy's. The and Cork then, Distillers, which is Paddy's, was yeah. one of them. When we get to the number one, we're actually gonna do a word cloud of all mm. the most common flavor, flavors people find in number one, but we'll get there right now. Paddy's, this is so light and sweet on the nose. It is, this is one of those blends of malt and grain and pot still, all three together. Right. Right, so there's three styles of Irish whiskey that are classic. Okay. Single malt, which is made like you would think scotch is made. Yeah. Right, distilled, pot distilled, all barley. Sure. There's pot still Irish whiskey, whiskey which is completely unique to Ireland, okay. which is pot still whiskey made right. with barley, right. but a percentage of that barley is unmalted. Mm -hmm. That's pot still Irish whiskey. And then there's your typical column still grain whiskey, okay. like you would have in Scotland. This is a blend, Patty's is a blend of all three of those. Can I tell you? Hmm. I'm not digging the nose. It's not for me. It's too musty sweet. When I'm in Ireland, when I'm in that, that category, of whiskey. I like the shortbread. That feels more quintessential, more classic to me. The taste, that's given me more of that vanilla, but then eventually it finishes really bright in ethanol. Yeah, it's very sharp. It's, yeah. This is definitely in the budget Irish category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what do we got as number nine? Number nine was one of my favorites. Uh-huh. Definitely one of Rex's favorites. Powers, I John's Lane <laughs> edition. I petulantly just, there we go, just threw it on the floor. Okay. I was actually aiming for Alex. What? What the fuck? Powers Whiskey. <laughs> we went on the Powers Whiskey Tour in the Powers Court. did, and that in, was really fun. In Dublin, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. This was specifically John's Lane 12-year-old Powers. Yeah. Rex managed to save some. How'd you do that, Rex? Don't worry about it. I got this. Ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm very glad this showed up on the list. Okay. Uh, it showed up as number nine. If you're asking me personally for my preferences, what is the most quintessential presentation of Irish whiskey? For me, it's going to be this one. Yeah. The Powers John's Lane Edition. I agree. Then I absolutely understand why people are voting up other whiskeys higher in the list. I agree. But I'm glad this one made an appearance because for me, this is just right down the middle of the home plate. It's a plate, it's a balancing act between the cornerstones of Irish whiskey. Shortbread cookie, vanilla, Oh, just that really nice, sweet, sugary, rounded off, buttery, voluptuous whiskey. There's body to that whiskey. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a hint of paper towel for some reason. Don't know why. 
<laughs> what was uh, number eight? Writer's Tears. Writer's Tears, okay. Writer's Tears is an amazing name for a very mild whiskey. Yeah, we've gone on record. We've gone on record. We the wish same. it was more so. It's one of the better names in all of whiskeydom. Mm -hmm. But it begs for more drama. It begs to have just more character and body. Coming off of patties, there's a lot more fruit in this than I remember. There is a lot more fruit. And, and there's a depth of, it's still got that honey and you know vanilla. I, this is proof down to 40%, basically the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, still be able to call it whiskey. It sort of just runs pure sweetness mm -hmm. and cream, technically. The next one, we got uh, Teeling Single Malt. Oh yeah, I went to find this one because we were out of it in the vault. Mm -hmm. You and I did an episode over in Teeling in mm -hmm. Dublin. We're big fans, we like them. Yeah, yeah. They're cool they, people. They had recently won best single malt in the world. Yeah, they had. Yeah. With a Cooley distillery. Yeah, yeah. Right, so remember their dad owned Cooley, and when he sold it, they were able to keep in the contract that the brothers would get access to some of those barrels yep. to open Teeling. Which they choose some amazing barrels. They chose, well. They cherry picked, yes. Sir. So this one, even though this is also a malt, like Writer's Tears, mm -hmm. there's way more musty grain notes to this one that I really like. It's actually. less candy fruity. Mm -hmm. Like a perfumey floral presentation mm, from, yeah. on the taste. And that's got depth and richness to it, and then it's coated on the top with all those floral notes. Yeah, and that's 46%, yeah. so you got a yeah. bit more, bit more ABV. Yes, I agree. I'm gonna move, I'm so short, the writer's tears is hiding my head. By the way, not short. I'm not short. I'm not that fat, okay? Okay. I'm not that fat. I went to the doctor last week. No, no, just let, dude. It's a full inch higher than what's on my driver's license. I'm fact. still growing, uh -huh. it turns out. No, hobbits grow well until they're 200s. Ah, that means I'm gonna be around a good 150 years after you die. Yeah. Powers Gold <laughs> label. <laughs> For the longest time, Powers was a very common, commonly consumed, if you said, give me a whiskey in right. Dublin, right. you were probably gonna get Powers. Yeah. And But they didn't distribute to the US very well, and so no one here knew what it was. And for a while, you could get it even cheaper than Bushmills and Jameson. Yeah. And I actually like it more. Even the Gold Label Budget, which is a blended Irish, it's got grain and yeah. uh, things. Not getting a big old shortbread cookie. That's honestly, if there is a note that I'm looking for, it is like a buttery shortbread note. This is my preferred budget. Okay. I like it better than Patty's, and actually I like it better than Bushmills and Jameson. The great whiskey spirits have summoned a sponsor! Well, nobody's gonna go out with me. Have you asked anybody yet? No, but who would? I don't even have any good skills. What do you mean? You know, like, fighting skills, after Effects skills, graphics design skills, computer hacking skills. Girls only want guys with great skills. Aren't you good at like going on the internet and stuff? Yes, probably the best that I know of. Go to Skillshare. It's an online learning community for creative skills. They have pretty good cocktail classes too. That's a pretty good idea. For less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, I can learn all the best skills. Nice. Can I learn Kung Fu? I don't think so. But I could show you Kung Fu. Sweet. Wait a minute. Someone already mooshed that flipping whiskey. Oh. The first 1,000 MBs to mooch the link below will get a free two month premium trial membership at Skillshare. Bushmills is the next one Aha. up on the list. You need to, uh, jeez. Someone needs to need to keep an eye on Rex. <laughs> this is the best whiskey. <laughs> I love you guys. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, on the, ooh. I got, man, I'm telling you, I'm liking the nose better in the Bushmills. Yeah, I get what you mean by that. I agree, it has more character. Yeah. There's a little bit more grain, musty notes. Yeah, and there's like a maltiness on that back end. Now, I would say that it's the body starts to be more rich than the powers, but then the finish sort of just like peters out. If we're on the taste, it's really close for me, but I gotta give the edge to, personal preference, I gotta give the edge to the powers gold there. Yeah, I agree. I believe I should take issue with the fact that the next one on the list, green spot. This should not be on a quintessential Irish whiskey so you're list. taking the same position. You feel the same way? I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel I, so am I glad to drink it? Hell yes. Right. Uh, is it quintessential? Ah, uh, 
I don't know. Why does yeah. this, at least for us, because taste is subjective in a lot of ways, but why, at least for us, is this going to be a unique angle on Irish whiskey? I would argue that this has all the classic Irish whiskey flavors yeah. underneath, but on top of that, it's got green, uh, a more green apple than I've ever found in any other Irish whiskey, plus coconut. Green apple, yes, sweet green apple. I'm gonna go in the taste. I don't oh, know. it's so you know pretty. What? Here's the thing. I did this whole rant. Get right it now, the, it's hitting the middle of it. Get on the taste, it really does feel like it's it's, it's right over home plate. Here's this um, sweet, creamy quality to it with the vanilla, with that green apple. That creamy sweetness is really, it's just carrying me home, baby. This is- I'm riding- The most dessert Irish whiskey. The cream. This is the most dessert Irish whiskey we've had so far. It is, oh, it's very sweet. Okay, uh, what's next? Tullamore Dew! Number three on the list. Uh, Tullamore Dew, this is gonna be your, one of the more budget options, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is right in line with Patties, Budget Jameson, Budget Bushmills. This is going to be more of the budget, shiny bright nose. It's closer to Patties than anything else we've had today. Yeah. The nose is pretty light, almost invisible for me, especially coming off the heels of that green spot. The taste really... is just buttercream and then gone. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's pretty simple. Nothing objectionable, it's just kinda meh. And then a little bit of like uh, an ethanol on the back end mm -hmm. there. Number two would yeah, be... No, now this, we, we were, we were uh, doing the votes across various social platforms in the whiskey truck. Mm -hmm. um, one platform, this next whiskey won, and on the other platform, it came in at number two. Between the top two here, mm -hmm. Red Breast and then the, the number one winner. They're totally different whiskeys. They're very different whiskeys, um, but then, fine. <laughs> they are very different whiskeys, but they're from the same distillery. Yeah, 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 but one is pot still, just straight up pot still. You know what? And I would argue- Let's just do, let's do this. Number one and number two. Yeah. Coming in at number two, Red Breast, Red Breast 12. Coming in at number one, Jameson. I would argue quintessential pot still. First Irish style. Okay. The thing that only Ireland makes, the unmalted barley. Sure. Red breast is it. Okay. Ah, oh, red breast pot still. Yeah. I Come mean, on. I still prefer green Come spot, on. but if I was Are picking, you coming on? If I was picking quintessential, I would still say red breast is more quintessential. Come on! This is very often a highly voted fan favorite. Oh yeah. Zero surprise whatsoever that red breast is it way, belongs. way, way up on the Irish whiskey quintessential list, and quite frankly, just whiskey lists in general, across categories. I agree. This is gonna make a very robust appearance. Jameson, this is gonna be your more budget option, and I think based on um, market penetration, and uh, just the, the level of familiarity and experience that people have with a whiskey, who hasn't had Jameson? I mean, yeah. It's everywhere. The Red Breast. The this Red is, Breast. This is tender and delicious. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Succulent. Delicious. Even. Yes, notes of um, It has a really prestige. Really rich. The thing that I'm looking for in a classic Irish. A hint short. of the upper middle class. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jameson for me has a much more bright ethanol vanilla note right in the nose. But it still has a little bit of that green apple that I found in a few other things and that slight candied note. Right. It's just way more simplified. If you like Irish whiskeys, I think both both of these, Red Breast and Jameson, are mm -hmm. gonna be a good representation of what the meaty center of Irish whiskey is all about. I agree. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit less expensive, a little bit simpler, you're not wanting to go on like adventure where you're just, oh, I'm trying to figure out all the layers. Just want a good whiskey. You're gonna do the, you're gonna do the Jameson. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna do a whiskey word club. Before we do that, we actually went to Middleton, mm -hmm. uh, where they make um, Red Breast and Green Spot and Jameson and, uh, uh, we got a behind the scenes tour. We got like yeah. really special access. So we're gonna link that up you know, if you wanna if you wanna check that out. I also um, dry humped the pot stills used to make red breast. No, he that's that's no joke. He literally did. Okay, Daniel, so we asked the Magnificent Bastards after we got the final result. Whiskeys I have not seen. I already see my favorite. All right, so we're looking at them now for the yeah. first time. Pick uh, my f what are the most common flavors that you find in Jameson whiskey? So people can see, okay, Jameson's the most classic quintessential find. What, what are most people finding in there? Vanilla, shortbread butter, honey, sweet, leprechauns. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on a second. You, see, plural you one. see shortbread? I do. Then above that is smooth. 
Wait, the, uh, shortbread smooth, yeah. And then above that shortbread? Yeah. Above that? Nutty nail? Balls. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of people put balls. So, I and mean, it's big enough to be like in the top 40, 50% of the tasting notes. So there had to be some, I think this may have been like a conspiracy. I think there was a cabal, the yeah, balls cabal. Scottish tears. I think there was a ball. Rex's nipple here. Orphan Jeez. tears, jeez. <laughs> you guys are ruthless. Alex, go to the bottom right a little bit more. Underneath leprechaun tears, I take issue with this. <laughs> Prettier girl. Oh no, there's no question. I definitely win that. I'll, I'll explain. These apps, leprechaun teat milk. Jeez. <laughs> oh, These apps where you can put in a picture and it'll turn you like really old. Or a girl or and, boy or. Yeah, so we ran through the, the girl filter yeah. what Daniel would look like and what I would look like. A couple versions. It's like I got like a big beard and you know, she, it, was a, it was a very attractive Rex lady, but she, she was a bit thick. You I mean, think your beard is causing no, that hold problem? On a second, hold on a second. <laughs> and then this, and let's look at like a picture of me pre pre beard. Oh yeah. We ran Even it that. We ran it through, and I was like a solid seven and a half, tickling the eight. And then you should see mine. <laughs> He's a really hot girl. <laughs> I'll pull up the image. You're looking for me. You act like a diva that looks like that. <laughs> you act like you look like this. I do look like that. That much of a diva. I do look like that. That's really hot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I look, that looks too young. That looks very young. Yeah. It looks like, you know, pretty illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're done. We've been done. We're done. I was hoping. <laughs>